Hey everyone, Jenna Sullivan here. We are on week 11 of our 90 day wellness challenge. And today we're gonna be talking about lymphatic drainage. So this week, you've got a couple different challenges. One is I'm going to teach you, you can maybe see back here, I'm gonna teach you how to make a really great lymphatic supporting sugar scrub. Yep, you heard that right. It's gonna be a really fun little how to DIY project. Uh, you can take a general sugar scrub and then add some of these lymphatic supporting oils to it. So we'll get into that in just a minute. But I wanna also help you understand some of the benefits of lymphatic drainage and supporting your lymph system. So what is your lymph system, right? So your lymphatic system is directly connected to your circulatory system. However, your circulatory system is on, a, on the constant move, whereas your lymphatic system can get sluggish. <laughs> so sometimes you'll hear people refer to this as a sluggish lymph. And just what that means is you might feel really tired at certain points of the day. Um, some of you might even have such chronic lymphatic sluggishness, meaning you're just chronically, your, the lymphatic system isn't working well, so your immune system will drop. And that means that you might get illnesses very easy, you um, are prone to infection. And our lymphatic system really is stimulated by movement, by breathing. There's a few different things that you can do to stimulate your lymphatic system, or at least support your lymphatic system. Uh, and just know that your lymphatic system is really going to help with detox, it's going to help uh, fight infection. It's going to really, uh, it, what it does is it creates these white blood cells to help attack, right, things that are bad. Um, and it really is more like the filtration system. So our spleen, for instance, would be your largest lymph node. It, it's, it's, even though it's an organ, it's considered just like the largest lymph node. So there are hundreds of lymph nodes all over your body. And then there's these kind of connectors, <laughs> almost like the circulatory system. It very much mirrors um, your circulatory system just in a different uh, different vessels so those vessels and how it's all treating is uh, is kind of a one direction so one thing some of you might have heard about before is lymphatic brushing so I've got a hairbrush here now I know many of you guys like those really soft bristle brushes that you can use to scrub your body with when you take a bath um, personally because I'm not super sensitive I mean I have pretty sensitive skin but I like to use something that is soft bristle so this is a soft bristle brush so I really don't like brushing my hair with this this is sort of irritating because it's it's not it doesn't really grab anything but I like to lymph lymphatic brush so we're gonna do dry brushing so this is basically scratching the surface of my skin. So the word scratch and dry brushing shouldn't really go to, together <laughs> because you want it to feel like it's gently massaging. So some people will say do small little circles, right, toward your heart. So the best way to remember this is just move toward your heart. So in any body part, like if I was gonna do my neck, I would just brush down toward my heart. Uh, some people will say you can go in any direction, like on your stomach, if I was gonna do my stomach or my back, <laughs> that you can go anywhere. Um, realistically, just remember, pull everything toward your heart. So again, on my arms, and we know that our skin is the biggest organ in our bodies. And so some people will just say, go short little brushes toward your heart, but circle motions is fine too. And why this is all stimulating your lymph is because your skin cells I'm sloughing them off. And by doing that, it's saying to my body and my lymph system, get moving. There's things we have to clean up. <laughs> so I like to look at the lymphatic system as almost like the garbage disposal system in our bodies. There's lots of that, but this is a um, really great way to do lymphatic dry brushing. So a lot of people do this in, in their shower. Uh, and the other way to then stimulate your lymph in the shower is you could dry brush right, before you get in, like get in, this is what a lot of people do, get in, dry brush, right, so I'll sit there and dry brush in the shower without the water going, <laughs> and then turn the water on, and take your shower, do your whole thing, and then there's a couple things you can do to also dry brush, to s stimulate your lymphatic system, is number one, after you've completed your shower, do a body scrub, and I'm gonna teach you how to do a lymphatic body scrub just in a minute, uh, and rinse it off. Don't wash it off because it's gonna you're gonna feel just amazing. Your skin will feel super soft. Number two, you're going to do a temperature adjustment in your shower. So for the shower, right? You're showering and you're doing your thing in normal water. 
Then at, uh, right at the end, you're going to do about 60 seconds of hotter than normal water. What that means is the water's gonna be a little bit like, ah, this is a little hot, so 60 seconds just in the water. Then turn it down to tepid water. So that doesn't mean cold, you don't have to do like an ice shower, just tepid to where it's like lukewarm and you'll feel refreshed, it will feel good. So do that for about 30 seconds. So 60 seconds hot, 30 seconds tepid, and then dry off. So that's gonna do three lymphatic things for you, right? So you dry brush in the beginning, you sugar, sugar scrub at the end, and then you do your water temperature change um, right at the end, okay? So that's a really, really good way to do, to stimulate your lymphatic system and to help drain it. Now, what do you think the number one thing though is? <laughs> this is these, are, these are common things. So I'm gonna give you a few more things here. Number one is get moving. So of course, you know, I, I don't remember to dry brush all the time. I didn't, don't shoot, do sugar scrubs all the time. And I definitely don't do the water temperature thing all the time. That's for sometimes when you just need to extra stimulate your lymph. You need to move. Movement is the key to lymphatic drain, drainage. So typically, like if I'm sitting writing, I will get lost for four or five hours just writing. And then I try to get up and there's stiffness and I feel like, ugh, like sluggish. So that is a sign that my lymph has stopped working. So what you wanna do is potentially, if you have a hard time remembering, is just set an alarm for every 30 or 40 minutes and then just get up and move. And all that means is maybe just go downstairs, go da upstairs, just go down and do something and come back up, right? That's enough to just get moving. Sometimes it just means standing up. So you might wanna stand up in your chair, you know, from your chair if you have a desk job, and just do some like stretches, maybe march in place. You know, you can do some jumping jacks if you feel like you can, but really it's just moving, right? And getting yourself moving. And I know some people will um, do this. So I'm gonna kinda of give you a, I'm gonna put this brush down. Is you can move like small little movements and 10 times and then big movements 10 times. So you, not like super huge, but like medium. And you can do that, at, you know, even if you're just having to sit down and those movements are gonna help stimulate your lymph. So that's just a simple technique that you can do is just the circle, you know, like you're flying. <laughs> um, and then the other thing is, <laughs> this is kind of crazy, but people don't realize this is laughter. Laughter stimulates your lymph. Now, why do you think la laughter will stimulate your, stimulate your lymph? <laughs> the reason is, if I'm gonna laugh, <laughs> right, like so crazy, ah, I have the craziest laugh. Um, Jacob has a new girlfriend and he, we are joking that her laugh is pretty, pretty much on par with mine because she has a pretty funny laugh. It makes everybody else laugh. But when you laugh, right, when I'm laughing, when I watch a funny show or if something funny happens, like I let it rip. I have a really hard time holding in that laughter. <laughs> and when I laugh really boisterously, what's happening is this oxygen is coming into my body. That stimulates your lymph. So I want you to remember that laughter, but also oxygen. So. Laughter helps with a lot of things too, by the way. It helps with depression, ups your mood instantly, gives you energy. So sometimes just watching funny cat videos on YouTube is all you need, right? Uh, but I do encourage you to consider, am I laughing enough? Have I, not, have I had a season where I'm not laughing? So what I want you to do is try and find some things that will um, tickle your funny bone and get you laughing a little bit. And that's gonna help you breathe. Also, you can just do breath work. And that just means like even just laying down and taking really deep breaths in, really deep and low breaths out. So whenever you do an oil change for your car, what do you do? Do you just keep topping it off with oil or do you actually get rid of all the old oil and then top it off with new? So when, as adults, we tend to take shallow breaths, right? And tend to have this kind of, right? That's an anxious breath. If I were to take big breaths, all the way out, like squeeze your lungs to get all of the oxygen out, then that's gonna take a much deeper breath in and that's gonna be much more healthful for you. So I encourage you to think about breath work and think about emptying your, your lungs fully, squeezing out the extra oxygen or carbon dioxide and then breathing in all of that fresh extra air. So that's a couple different ways to get you moving here. I'm gonna bring you guys over right now to make this, are you guys excited about that? So let me see if I can turn this around. So you'll have a little bit of a, a little bit of a view here as we turn this around and I get this set up for y'all. 
And can anyone guess which essential oils I'm going to use for this sugar scrub? So this is gonna be a good sugar scrub. Let's hope that this stays here. Okay, so I've got my sugars. I'm going to put a quarter cup of brown sugar into a bowl and don't use plastic. Make sure you're using actual like a glass bowl or a um, ceramic bowl. I did a half a cup of granulated sugar. Okay, so I'm using organic granulated sugar. You can see my end product here. And then what I'm going to do is add some oil. So I have rosehip seed oil. You can use any carrier oil that you want that you like on your skin. I like rosehip seed oil. So I'm just going to start with one tablespoon of rosehip seed oil. That's from Dr. Adorable. And I have one tablespoon of honey. Now honey is optional. It's totally up to you. And then I have in my sink over there some carrier oil. This is organic virgin um, coconut oil. And I like using coconut oil simply because this is going to help with um, keeping it solid in a solid state. So I'm just gonna start with one tablespoon for now. All right, so. This is kind of a, a weird little thing here, but I find that mixing this works way better with your hands rather than uh, with like a, a mixer. Your, the warmth of your hands is gonna help this all come together more. So what you wanna do is just keep on adding your virgin coconut oil until, it's all until it feels like wet sand. So it's pretty close, but I'd like it to be a little bit more. So I'm gonna add one more tablespoon here. <clears throat> and the trick here is just to see, you know, each of you have a little bit different ingredients. So you want to make sure that your ingredients um, are making it the right consistency. So, like in the, um, I'm gonna get rid of that guy. In the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Essential Oil Make and Takes book, it just says add virgin coconut oil until it is the right consistency. So what is the right consistency? <laughs> That's always the question. It really is personal preference. So right now I have sort of a wet sand consistency, which could work, right, uh, just fine. But just because I like it to be a little bit more moist, I'm gonna add one more tablespoon. So we had three tablespoons of virgin coconut oil and one tablespoon of raw honey and one tablespoon of rosehip seed oil. Okay, so that feels a little bit better to me. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this. It's looking really good, and I can, I can kind of form it in my hand. So it should feel like something you could form, but that would crumble easy. Okay, this is excellent, by the way, um, for your hands, to give yourself like a really great hand scrub. All right, so that being said, I'm gonna add my essential oils now as I make a mess in the kitchen. Okay, cypress, really great essential oil for lymphatic system. So I'm gonna put six drops of cypress. Okay, now I could have pre-mixed all of this, the oils, because they can create a synergy, but not a big deal in this because we're just gonna use this thing up. I'm gonna put it right in the middle here. Grapefruit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten went in, it's not a big deal. I like the way it smells, so I'm gonna use a little bit more of that. And then ginger. I don't have the regular ginger, usually it's the brown color. Um, it's the same oil inside. This is from the Vitality line, and you can use the Vitality line. And I'm gonna do three drops of ginger. You can use the Vitality line also for topical. All right, and then I'm gonna mix all this up. And this will create four ounces. So then you can put it all into a jar that you bring into the bathroom. Now there's not enough, so here's the thing, that, I get a lot of questions on this one. Okay, Jen, well you're putting that in a plastic container. Isn't that really bad? 
Well, this is hard plastic. This is not soft. I can't squeeze it. It's a hard plastic clear um, PET. And uh, it's, there's not enough essential oils in there. There was 10 drops of grapefruit oil to four ounces of product. So there's not really enough. It's like when people ask me like, can't your lips burn from grapefruit fruit, um, lip balm? No, there's not enough in there to cause any problems. So this is actually a really good consistency. And I'm going to wash my hands off and just know that you would just put that into one of those containers. That way, like I drop things all the time and I feel like I would drop a glass container in my, in my bath, right? So I hope that that makes sense there for you guys. And I'll turn this back around. Ooh, you guys are seeing my ceiling. <laughs> so I hope that that makes sense for you guys and you're able to see how we make this beautiful concoction here. Is this gonna stay? It's always fun doing it on the fly. Um, so that concoction will enable you guys, hopefully you can see it over there, will enable you guys to use it for your hands, but when you want to do a draw, like a scrub on your body, remember, work toward the heart for lymphatic system, okay? So that is a really fun sugar scrub, and hopefully you got a lot of information out of this, and this is really important for many of us to do. So that's your challenge this week, is to make a sugar scrub and use it for seven days, and then try one of the other lymphatic systems, so the drainage techniques, right? So maybe you're gonna dry brush, Maybe you're going to do the bath one, right? So you can do a bath temperature change or a shower temperature change. So the bath temperature change is a little bit different and that would mean get into a bath that's hotter than normal for 20 minutes. Almost like you wanna sweat in that bath. <laughs> and then when you get out of the bath, shower off in tepid water. Again, not cold water, but just kind of that lukewarm water and you'll feel refreshed. That is a really good way to stimulate your lymphatic system. And then also you could try um, just the breathing exercises, watching some funny movie or laugh. If you, if you have somebody that makes you laugh, one of my very best girlfriends makes me laugh all the time. So whenever I get um, with her, I'm always like, yay, I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> so I hope this is helpful for you. Again, if you're confused and wondering, what is this 90 day challenge she's talking about? Um, we are on week 11, we have one more week to go and you are more than welcome to join us at any point in the challenge. So that means, you can go ahead and join uh, week two, week one, week five. You can just jump around because each week is in its own week. Uh, but week one is really fun and it brings you all the way through the challenge. You can go to vitalityedu.com forward slash 90 days. If you want to get in on the full wellness challenge course, go to vitalityedu.com forward slash wellness. And this is part of a book series that is called Wellness, Purpose, and Abundance. There are three books, and you can get each of them at 31oils.com and then forward slash whatever the name of the book is. So 31oils.com forward slash wellness, 31oils.com forward slash purpose, or 31oils.com forward slash abundance. And that is the Young Living motto, that we have wellness, purpose, and abundance. So I hope that you are enjoying this 90-day uh, challenge. This is free for anyone. There is no charge for this challenge, and it is just my gift back to you to help you all get healthier. All right, you guys, we'll see you soon. Take care.